Welcome back everyone to another MCAT ACE lecture. Today's lecture is going to focus on the respiratory system. We are going to discuss general functions of the system including gas exchange, thermoregulation, as well as the pH control. We will also go over structure of the lungs and alveoli. We will discuss how the medulla controls respiratory rate in order to adjust the pH. We will also discuss different defense mechanisms that are available in the respiratory tract in order to prevent dust particles from reaching the alveoli. And then finally, we will go over the breathing mechanism in relation to the changes to the intrapleural pressure and discuss how during breathing and during exhalation, how this pressure changes and causes um, airflow from the atmospheric air into the alveoli. All right, so with that general outline in mind, let's move on with discussing the general functions of the respiratory tract. So the respiratory tract starts with the nose and the mouth. Nose is made of cartilage and bones, as well as nasal cavity. And its function is basically to filter the air with nasal hairs while humidify and warms the air that is being inhaled through the nose. We also have the olfactory epithelium that is located on the superior region of the nasal cavity. And this structure consists of the sensory receptors that help with smell perception. The next structure is pharynx, which connects nose and the mouth to the esophagus and the trachea. And we just discussed in the digestive tract video how in order to prevent the food particles from entering the trachea, which can cause choking, there would be closure of epiglottis channel anytime we are swallowing food. As a consequence of which now food particles will directly go through the esophagus and from here on they would enter the stomach. But then while we are breathing, that's the time that epiglottis will be open in order to allow air to enter the trachea. So once again, pharynx, which is located in this area, is basically a tube-like structure that joins nose and the mouth to the larynx, trachea, and esophagus. So we've already discussed the function of the esophagus is to let food down into the digestive tract, particularly stomach is the next structure that it will reach. And then regarding trachea, it will divide into smaller branches called bronchi, bronchioles, terminal bronchioles, until they will eventually become so small that are, that are called respiratory bronchioles and alveolar ducts and sacs. And it's actually air exchange that happens in these two last structures. That's why I've shown these two structures in pink because these are the respiratory zone where gas exchange can happen. The rest of the structures shown here are just for conducting air all the way down to the respiratory zone. But basically these are not involved in gas exchange. Okay, now there is one last structure that I would like to discuss with you and that's larynx which is located on top of the trachea. So here we have larynx, which is made of a pair of elastic bands of muscles. So it has pair of elastic band of muscles that are called vocal cords and its job is to produce sounds. All right, and so with the general outline of structures of the respiratory system, now we can go over different functions of the respiratory system. So as you're aware, number one function of the respiratory system is gas exchange, where CO2 will be exhaled while O2 will be inhaled in order to allow oxygenated blood to return back to the left side of the heart with the help of the pulmonary vein, so gas exchange lose CO2 and gain O2 in the lungs. The other function of the respiratory system is temperature regulation or thermal regulation. And this is due to the fact that the respiratory system is highly vascularized. And so therefore, once these capillaries are dilated, a lot of heat can be dissipated through the evaporative cooling. So there would be evaporative cooling through the dilated vessels of the respiratory tract. But I would like you to know that this type of 
Thermoregulation is more commonly seen in birds. Humans, on the other hand, we mostly rely on our skin as well as muscles. So once we are feeling cold, our muscles will start to shiver while the uh, capillaries in the skin will constrict so that we don't lose any heat through our skin. On the other hand, when we are feeling hot, that's the time that our sweat gland will start to work so that it would cause evaporative cooling on the surface of the skin and our capillaries of the skin will also dilate in order to dissipate heat through our skin. So again, thermoregulation regarding the respiratory tract is more seen in birds rather than in humans. And finally, the third function of the respiratory system is to regulate pH. And so in order to understand the role of the respiratory system in pH regulation, I just have to discuss some chemistry concepts here. So CO2 can be combined with water with the help of the carbonic anhydrase enzyme in order to yield carbonic acid. And now this carbonic acid can dissociate into bicarbonate ion as well as a hydrogen ion and so because hydrogen ion is extremely acidic if there is elevated concentration of co2 in our blood this equation will be shifted to the right side as a consequence of which there would be elevated h plus and so therefore ph of our blood will decrease once this happens there is a respiratory regulatory center in our brain and that is located in medulla so that's important i would like you to remember that medulla is the center for regulating the respiratory rate once medulla senses decrease in ph it would signal the respiratory system to increase the respiration rate as well as the respiration depth so what happens once there is an increase in respiration rate there would be a drop in co2 concentration of the blood as a consequence of which now the equation shifts to the left side so once it shifts to the left side the h plus concentration will drop and so therefore ph will be increased until it's normalized okay so Another function of the respiratory system is regulating pH by adjusting the CO2 concentration of our blood. And what's the system that is responsible for regulating the breathing rate? It's the medulla that is located in our brain. And here I have summarized the findings how CO2 can be combined with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrous to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid dissociates into hydrogen ion and HCO3. Under conditions where there is low pH, there is therefore high H plus concentration and high CO2 that shifts the equation to the left side. Once this happens, the body responds by increasing the respiration rate as a consequence of which CO2 will drop and the equation would be shifted to the left side as a consequence of which H plus concentration will drop. The kidney will also help under these circumstances by increasing reabsorption of HCO3, which will also push the equation to the left side. Alternatively, let's say that we are having elevation in pH. Let's discuss how these two systems will cope with that. Okay. All right, so now we are discussing that we have an elevation in pH. So what happens once there is increase in pH? It means that we have low concentration of H+. Plus, and so therefore, we need to push the equation to the right side so that H plus concentration would increase. So how can we do that? One way to do that is by decreasing reabsorption of HCO3 and letting it get excreted in the urine so therefore by losing hco3 right here the equation would be pushed to the right side alternatively the respiratory rate could decrease as a consequence of which so there is decreased respiratory rate as a consequence of which there would be elevated co2 in our blood that will again push the equation to the right side consequently there would be elevated h plus concentration and so ph will drop 
until it normalizes. Okay, so my point here is that the lungs and the kidneys work in conjunctions in order to regulate the pH of our blood. The next topic is structure of the lungs and alveoli. So